this is Mike Hamilton for Trade Easy Way. Uh, having done my scanning, this is my view of the market as we head into the US rate decision on Wednesday, two hours before the market's close. Markets are expecting a 50 basis points increase. We had Bank of Australia last night raise rates to uh, 0.35. They're only expected to go up to 2.25. So the money is on an aggressive 50 basis points raise in rates. And we also got monthly US jobs on Friday. So here's the dollar on the daily index coming sitting right up at this extension. So it's been on a huge run ever since uh, May last year. And this is potentially going to already peg back commodity prices. So it's possible uh, in this scenario that with a strong dollar, uh, the inflation could have peaked earlier than people expect. So this ba this early aggressive uh, raising rates, if we get it, may not be um, as bad as we expect if the market then believes and we then get delivered lower rate expectations the rest of the year. Some very aggressive um, predictions are that we get another 50 basis points on the next meeting as well. So we end up with a full 1% 1, 1 above from where we are right now. But um, so that's why the dollar is so strong at the moment. Now, so there's three issues out there at the moment. Fed interest rate rises, Russia, and the slower Chinese economy as well. So three issues, but the main one is the Fed. Um, so far, jobs have held up. Uh, GDP up until the last GDP announcement has been strong. So we had a dull start to the year on GDP, but um, it's all in, for my money, it's all about the rates. Um, if the Fed maintain a very cautious, uh, very hawkish note, and we do get a, a, end up with um, 100 basis points in the next couple of months, then that does potentially put the brakes on the economy. That is shown through, so the strong dollar is shown through in the gold. At the moment, the gold looks as if it's, we're 18.55 as I speak, unless we turn around on the back of this decision this week, uh, we could come all the way back down to 1800 and back down here to 1790 at the moment. This is just falling out of the sky at the moment. And as we speak, there's no sign of a, a pullback. Oil is um, counter to the strong dollar. So this is relative strength. The fact this is sitting up here on the back of a strong dollar, the normal healthy relationship is divergent. This is convergent at the moment. We're sitting up with a strong dollar. So I would expect this to be sideways until we get Wednesday out of the way. Of course, we've got oil events on Wednesday anyway. So let's have a look at the NASDAQ, because what the NASDAQ does, the rest of the market follows. So we saw um, a push higher into the close last week, but all we're doing is staying in this channel. I don't think we're going to come out of this channel until we get um, the market directional move from Wednesday. Now, just because if we do get a 50 basis points raise, just because we get uh, an interest rate rise doesn't mean to say this market's going to fall over. It It's about where we go after that decision. It's about the reaction to that decision that is going to affect this market. So if, if we pop out of the top of this uh, channel, then we could recover to 14,000. If we break these lows, then we are coming down to 12,000 and potentially lower. All right, so the we are making, every time we bump into this trend line up here at the moment, we fail. Well, we certainly failed up there on the 4th of April. So April was a really, really bumpy month. You'd normally expect April, to, April and May to be buoyant. Um, we have not got that. So cutting across to the Dow, uh, I don't believe that that push higher into the close is sustainable at the moment. At the very least, as, as I said, I would expect this to drift lower, 32,300 at least. If we break that, we're lower. Um, if the reaction on Wednesday is good, then we could 
push back to 35,000 and this trend line up here on the Dow at 35,000. All right, so uh, UK FTSE uh, sitting up here at 20, 21 highs under this structure. All the time we're under this structure, um, it is, I still believe it's worth selling the highs at the moment at this stage. So that's a good way to hedge. If you're long a lot of equities, uh, one way you can hedge is to sell this FTSE. DAX uh, sitting on this support just, but look at this bar from the 26th of April. We have not managed to get uh, either side of it. So the path of least resistance is at the moment down. If we start closing underneath 750, then I think we're going to see 13 to 50 and lower. Uh, of course, if we close above 14,150, then we could start to reclaim some of this ground. All right, but like I said, uh, don't assume that the market's going to keep going down. Um, if we end, if the markets are happy with that, with the feedback and the reaction to that rate rise, um, which we are apparently facing, then. You know, we, we could see a return on the upside, but it is out. Vol um, the volatility index is raised, it's high, dollars high, gold is weak. So the fact that gold is, is weak and is divergent to the dollar is still bullish. Uh, my only my irony is really start to worry if, if the gold picks up with a strong dollar. Uh, as we had in 0708. So in this environment, normally you would expect the banks to sit up. So Barclays at the moment is sitting up on volume. So uh, the jury is out unless we close above this 155, but at the moment we are holding up. Lloyd's is not. And we're coming down with the volume beginning to build up. So be very careful. Legal and general. Uh, to pull back into a support area. This 244 is a key support area. The volume is picking up here. So legal and general could do better out of here. But that's a very uh, decent drop there. So any pullbacks into this 252.60. If they are not sustained, then we're coming back to these lows and potentially lower. Standard chartered, uh, there's a big push up and sitting up. So all is not done. Uh, this is Ashmore. Ooh, on the line, volume's not been bad the last couple of days, but I would stay away from that at the moment. Even uh, AJ Bell. I, th I was getting ready to buy this one, but it just didn't pan out. Um, it's just not at all happy. So that's the banks. Let's cut across to retail. Uh, Card Factory is sitting up on that refinancing, so I'm just backing off of this one. Uh, I'm, I'm stalking this for a short, for a bear raider short. Um, but the moment the volume's up, um, the results have been positive, been better than expected. They've refinanced, so I'm backing off. And let's have a look at the, the boo because it's a, a, attempting to push up here. We've got uh, UK rates this week as well, haven't we? Let me just double check that. I'm sure we have. Uh, is that on? Yeah, we've got UK rates midday Thursday. So a rate rise uh, could hit these guys as well. Uh, it's certainly attempting to hold this. Uh, it was a bit of a little. We, we broke up here from 75, 76. We're sitting above this. Uh, I would back off until. I, I think this is a week to sit on your hands and see what the market wants to do, but particularly up until Wednesday. Let's see how the market reacts for Wednesday. ASOS trying to perk up. This is, this is a very beaten up stock. And the volumes, although have been better, they are still not great. Sainsbury's. Um, pff, the jury's out. 
we had this big drop on the 28th. Was that earnings? I'm not sure, I can't remember. Tesco. And Tesco has picked up. It's only nudging that trend line though. Uh, I'm just very cautious. I'm happy to sit on my hands at the moment. Royal Mail Group, lovely spike up into the 360 resistance, and now we're continually dropping back. So I'm just I'm continue with this theme of short termism that I've, I've had this year. Um, you know, if you've got 15 to anything between 15 and 30 percent, gets me out of stocks at the moment. Uh, this is Chewy on the line. The volumes are building, but from a low base. So uh, I think it is, I mean, my theme of short termism, and particularly this week sitting in my hands, um, is very much the way I want to do it, I want to handle it at the moment. Let's just look at basic materials, and then I'll finish up. Uh, Rio, it's, it's under this trend line. So all the time we're under this trend line. I won't let me grab it for some reason. There it is. Uh, all the time around this trend line, I think we could come lower, and volume suggests that as well. Man Group, um, now this, this pulled right back to that pink zone and, and perked up, um, but I would back off for now. Uh, Elementis, um, pff, still not touching it, still waiting. Let's have a quick look at the miners, then I'll finish up. Uh, we've got uh, Hostchild and that's a little reversal signal there on Friday on higher volume so uh, I do think this is worth a punt but I would have a tight stop I think this this 115 116 is potentially viable but I would get out if it gets under 110 I keep my stop at about 108.50 um, Pan African uh, sideways, but the volumes have been very strong the last few days, so these, these miners do appear to be getting bought. Um, Griffin, now this, this needs a pullback because it went on a big three leg run. I would sit tight, um, I'm much happy with Pan African and uh, Hostchild. Right, that's it. I will do a, I've got an event coming up on Wednesday instead of the usual midweek and um, I'll get back to you with the format uh, going forward here for our sessions. Thanks for listening. Uh, caution is seems to be the key word. Talk to you very soon.